Hi, I'm Cantor Debbie Kachko Gray, and I'm starting my very first series of YouTube tutorials on Swedish weaving. This is something that I've been doing for a long time, and um, shameless promotion, I just came out with a book. It's called Prayerful Creations, and that's what I'm going to call my YouTube tutorials, Prayerful Creations. I've been making um, talisim or talitote prayer shawls for a long time, and I started making them for my four sons and expanded to making them for friends and other relatives and then teaching about them. And I found that this to be a really relaxing and wonderful um, hobby, which in these times of social isolation and distancing, I think this is a wonderful thing to do. So I'm going to show you a few examples first. This is a little bit of a tablecloth I made. <clears throat> Very simple. And going to show you a few challah covers. This is made on blue. And this fabric is called popcorn or Stockholm. And that information's in my book. And can be found at Monk's Cloth Lady online. Or I do have a supply of them that I do sell. I bought a lot of this material in a lot of different colors. You can see how interesting each one can be. And I have made table runners as well. And I thought today I would begin a table runner and show you step by step what to do. So the first thing is this material. This is in a blue and you can see that it has little floats on top of the fabric. So your needle goes through these little floats and does not go through the fabric. So I'm going to just show you a little bit here that it goes, the needle goes through the floats, but not through the fabric. So I'm going to begin by using a variety of threads. This kind of thread is really fun. You can find it in crochet stores, uh, yarn knitting stores. Uh, it's just got a little bit of a fringe and it's thin enough so it goes through the actual fabric. I'm actually using it in another project, actually right here, in blues. But I've got it in all different kinds of colors, and it's a lot of fun. So to begin with, this is the width of this table runner. And I'm going to measure a piece of thread that is just a little bit longer than, um, than the table runner. So let me just get an end here. <clears throat> I'm going to measure and you can see I have the thread just hanging off a little bit on each side. So now I'm going to thread my needle and this is size 18 tapestry needle. It has a dull end, and I always find that if I just squeeze the thread and put it near the needle, it goes through every time. I don't have the greatest eyesight anymore since I've been making these for so many years, but I find that the 18 needle has a big enough eye of the needle where you can just about put any thread right through it. So here's my fabric. And I'm gonna start with literally just a straight row. I'm gonna start in the middle of the fabric. And you can see, I just put it through here. And I'm going to, I'm going to skip one, two, three. I'm going to go into the third float because I want some of these threads to be able to show. So I'm gonna pull it through and now I'm going to go skipping one, two, 
go into the third, go into the third, and you can see how that looks. <clears throat> now I'm going to just leave it in there, and now I'm going to add another thread for my straight row, and I like to use shiny threads. I think they really make things pop. So I use the metallic ribbon floss, and I have silver, and I have dark, dark uh, black. And I'm going to start with a little black. And I'm just going to put in a straight row. So again, I'm going to measure a little bit on either side. A little bit on either side. And this thread, again, I just kind of squeeze the end and it goes through very easily. Okay? <clears throat> then I'm going to put this in the row right above it. I'm going to see if I can do this so you can see it even a little better. I'm going to just put it right in here. And this one I'm going to put through every single float. You can see that. I'm going to pull it through. And I'm going to continue this at another time because I, what I like to do is put the threads in place and then finish it when I'm like sitting down and watching a movie that my husband likes and I don't really care about, but I can sit there and keep him company and I can stitch away and be very happy as long as I have a light nearby. Okay, so now since I do like symmetry, since I have the fringy and then the shiny, I'm going to put another piece of this fringe right on top of it. Leaving a little bit on either side. There's my thread. And I'm going to just put this right on top of that. So here I just, again, you just squeeze and put the needle right there. And I'm going to put this right on top of it. And again, I'm doing every fourth float, so you could, just so you can see. You could count the floats or you can count the spaces in between. So I've got one, two, three spaces, or you can count one, two, three, four of the floats. And as long as it is equal, you're fine. So there's my first little bit of a, of a stripe. That's a straight row. Now, if I want to, I can add um, even like say a little bit of a pop of color on either side. So I think I'm going to do that because I've got this very pretty cobalt blue. Now this is DMC Pearl Cotton and it's number three. I like to use a combination of number three and number five. I use five a little more, it's finer and a little bit thinner, but I find that three gives a little bit of texture. And I learned most of what I know from my dear friend, Ellen Tempkin, who is the one who figured out how to use Swedish weaving in a very creative way to make prayer shawls. And that really changed my life. So now I'm going to measure two pieces of this cobalt blue. And I'm going to I'm going to place it on either side of this stripe. So here's my pearl cotton number three, and it goes right through. And I'm going to put this, <clears throat> I'm going to put this on the row 
on either side of this. So this one is going to go right here. Got a straight row. And see how nice that is with a little bit of a blue there? And I'm going to take this one and I'm going to put it on the other side. Now with the thicker thread, you just have to kind of squeeze it and it goes through the needle. So now I'm going to put it on the other side. You can see it. There we go, and that's a straight row. And that's the simplest, the very simplest Swedish weaving you can do because it's just a straight row. I'm going to do another video in a minute using a beautiful pattern that I enjoy. So thank you for checking in on Prayerful Creations. And I'm gonna to continue to do these um, tutorials for you and I hope you enjoy and I hope you enjoy prayerful creations thank you